Today I am here in Stanton, California at Kim's Pianos, which is an absolutely fantastic piano store. And one of the really cool pianos they have here is this. As you can see, it says Julius Blutner on the fallboard. So this is a Blutner piano, of course, as you can see. And basically what this is uh, intending to do, the style and the, the, the look of this piano is emulating and imitating quite well, in fact, the appearance of a piano that Blutner used to make from about perhaps 1912, the early 1900s. And what's kind of neat is that that exact piano, the original version of this, is actually at this store. So what I wanted to do, it's the same size, same everything. This is a Model 6, it's 190 centimeters. I think that's about six feet, four inches. So what I wanted to do is look at all of the visual differences as well as the sonic differences, everything that sounds different and looks different about these two pianos. Because while this is very, very similar to the old one, there are some slight subtle differences. So I wanted to talk about that, show you guys the inside of the piano, some of the things that make this, which is from about 2018, 2019, things that make this different compared to the one from 1912, and we will see and hear all those differences. So I hope you enjoy. Let me show you first the differences, the things on the inside here. I'll show you some of the uh, interesting things on the inside of the one that's in 19, tw from 1912, and then I'll play them both and let you listen to them. So this is the inside of the new Blutner, and let's take a look at how the harp looks. You can see here that it's very, very similar to the. Um, the old one that I'll show you in just a bit. When I show you that one, you'll see that it's very similar to this, but I think that the new one doesn't have quite the level of detail and precision that the old one does, but you can definitely tell that it is meant to look old, and they did a pretty good job of it. The text here is all the same as on the original one, and I will show you that in just a bit as well. But one important thing that I want to mention to you is that Blutner has the aliquot stringing system. It's a fourth string that's sympathetic with all the other ones. The hammer doesn't actually hit it, but it's there to add extra sustain and power. And as you can see here, we have four additional hitch pins. Normally there are simply three, like down here, but uh, from this brace onwards to the right of the piano when you're seated at it, seated at it, you will have four strings. And that is how modern Blutners are done. But what's interesting is on the old one, there's actually more, and I'll show you that in a bit. And you can also see that, notice that all of the uh, hitch pins, including the aliquot, are on the same level as the harp, and that underneath of them there is a little metal disc. You'll see that that's different on the 1912 piano as well. But other than that, everything else in here is basically about the same, and and they did a very good job of replicating the old appearance of the piano. But if you look at them side by side, you can actually see some differences and some interesting changes. I don't exactly know why they have, you know, um, less aliquot strings today or why they have the way the way they are set up today, like all on the same level of the harp. Whereas on the new one, I mean on the old one, there's actually the aliquot string is actually on a different level and a different section of the harp. Why they changed it, I don't know, but I'm sure there was an excellent reason for all of it. There's probably too much work to you know, add in all the aliquot strings and set them up just right and stuff like that. So they decrease the amount of aliquot strings, and this is how it's done on a new Blutner piano. Let's go check out the old one and see how that's different. So here's the inside of the original Blutner, the one from 1912. And as you can see, it looks similar, but also a little bit different, especially when it comes to this big logo that we're panning over to here that says Julius Blutner. This looks superficially just like the one on the new Blutner from 2019 or 2018, but you can see that it's a little bit more detailed and a little bit slightly different looking. I think that the angels are a bit of a different color than the bass harp there is, and uh, it's a little bit different looking as well. You can see here that these designs are really about the same, but they are ever so slightly different as well. You can also see here that the aliquot stringing system has been done quite differently, in fact. We have these felts that are uh, running through here to keep the aliquot system from being insanely, um, you know, resonant and too overpowering. And as it is already, there's a lot of uh, sympathetic resonance. And without those uh, felts in there, it would probably be absolutely insane. So it's a good idea that they had those in there. But you can also see that the way they mounted or the way they hitched the aliquot strings is a little bit different as well. You can see that the main course of strings is down here on this kind of level of the harp, but then the aliquot strings, which are these ones, are actually hitched above on a different level of the harp. And it's kind of interesting that they're a little bit longer, and this half of the string isn't actually speaking at all. It's beyond the bridge, and you don't actually hear this part really when you're playing the piano. But it's interesting that they're a lot longer and that they're actually on a separate elevation of the harp than the rest of the strings are. On the new Blutner, I showed you that they're actually on the same level. And they also, I don't think, have the little blue rings of felt underneath, which are a nice touch, and they look quite attractive. 
You can also see here that there's like an interesting little post that each aliquot string runs through. Um, it's like a, it's almost like another little bridge. And I don't exactly know what that's doing. I guess it's just guiding the string, or maybe it's terminating it at some like harmonic point or something like that. But it's kind of interesting that that's there. I don't remember seeing that on the new version of this piano. So those are all the differences on the inside of the piano, other than the fact that you can see that on this one from 1912, there are screws attaching the ribs to the underside of the soundboard. This was a common practice back in the day in the early 1900s, and it's not done anymore, except in the case of, for example, this piano, when they're restoring an, an old piano and they want to keep it faithful to the original. Those are probably possibly new screws, or they're just the old ones, but they've been cleaned so that they look pretty new. But whatever the case may be, the um, this would not be found on a brand new manufactured piano today. And you can see those screws that are used to mount the uh, ribs to the, to the soundboard. So let's hear how the 2018 or 2019, it's a pretty new piano. Let's see how this Blutner, the Julius Blutner, compares to the original. What I'm going to do is I'm going to play the beginning a bit of Debussy. I'm not going to play the whole thing through because it is a pretty long piece, but I am going to play most of it through, particularly the beginning section because that really brings out the resonance of pianos. We'll see how that compares as well as the overall tone and sound quality of these two pianos. I hope you enjoy. So that is the sound of this Julius Blutner, and I hope that you guys enjoyed it. It has a bit of a different sound from the 1912. I think it has a bit of a thicker sound in the mid-range here. A little bit, possibly, of a better bass. Possibly, I think. And the treble on this one isn't quite as icy cold as the 1912, and I'll show you that in just a little bit here. But very resonant. Let's check out the 1912 now and see how it's different. 
So now let's play the 1912 Julius Blutner. A couple things that are different about this that I didn't mention are that the inside of the uh, the other one, the one from 2018, had that really cool like wood on the inside that I didn't actually notice was different about this one. And also the other one says Julius Blutner with two crests on the fallboard, and this one simply says Blutner. But other than that, they're about, they look very, very similar. So I figured that we'd shoot from the same angle so you can kind of see the same stuff that you did in the other video. And let's play the same passage of Claire de Lune by Debussy and hope you guys enjoy. So that is the sound of the 1912 Blutner Model 6, 190 centimeters. So you can hear differences between these pianos. This one here has a lot more sympathetic resonance going on up here in the treble. And overall, I think it has a bit of a brighter sound, especially up here in the very, very high treble. It's really, really sparkly and icy cold, and it really, really sounds fantastic. I don't think that the um, the new Blutner sounded quite that sparkly up here in the very high register, but that's probably mostly due to to voicing and the hammers on this piano are just a little bit brighter and harder in this region of the piano than on the other piano. Two things I wanted to mention are that the actions used in these pianos are radically different. The modern Blutner uses a Renner action, which has a heavy, substantial, but very responsive feeling. I didn't really have any hard times playing the piece at all. This uses what is known as a patent action. It was the um, it was a revolutionary action, really, designed by Julius Blutner back in the day. And they're not used on modern Blutners anymore, and I can kind of see why. Part of me likes them, but part of me is also just really used to the Renner feel. This here is very, very light, and it does respond and react a bit differently than a modern piano action does. I don't really know the full story behind the patent action, any cool trivia about it or anything like that. Perhaps some of you do, and if you do know cool facts and things 
about it, please let me know down in the comment section below. But this uses a patent action. It's radically different to really most any other grand piano action out there. And that's what this uses. It has a very light feel, whereas the Renner on the new Blutner is heavier, more substantial, and more like most other pianos out on the market. Another important thing that you can't see from that angle, but you will just have to believe me on, is that this piano has two pedals. So if you really, really want that middle pedal, this piano isn't for you. Because it only has two. You got damper, and you have the left pedal, which is the unicorder pedal, and that makes the whole, um, the whole action shift over a little bit and makes the piano a little bit quieter. Where's your with it off? So this only has two pedals. The new one, of course, has three, which is an additional feature. So if you really, really want that sostenuto pedal, the new one is for you. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this very interesting comparison between two very similar Blutners. I thought it was kind of interesting that not only did they have the new reissue of this piano, but also the original piano just down the hall of it. So if you're in the Stanton, California area, definitely come by and visit Kim's Pianos. They have an absolutely fantastic array of all kinds of pianos. I got uprights, baby grands. This is in that range of baby grand, a little bit bigger than perhaps a baby grand, maybe a parlor grand, is, if, if you will. And they also have a massive selection of concert grands, more than most piano stores I visit, in fact. So if you're in the Stanton area and you love pianos, definitely come by and visit Kim's Pianos. They're absolutely awesome. If you can't do that, you might want to go check out my YouTube channel because I do have lots of videos from Kim's Pianos on Blutners and all kinds of other really cool brands like Steinway and Bosenerver and really neat stuff. So if you want, you can go check all that out. If you do, you might want to think about subscribing. And if you do that, thank you very much, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.